Hello friends, my name is Lee, and I create videos about photography as an art and as a lifestyle. Today, we are going to edit some photos together. But we're not going to use my computer like we normally do. We are going to edit everything on mobile, my iPad and my iPhone, because Skylum recently released Luminar for iPad, and today they announced the version for iPhone. I have been using both versions for a while now, and I really like them. So I asked Skylum if they would like to sponsor this video, and they agreed. So today's video is kindly sponsored by Skylum. Remember though, all of my thoughts are my own. Like I said, I reached out to Skylum for this sponsorship because I do enjoy their editing software for my computer, Luminar Neo, and now their mobile apps. One of the main reasons I like Luminar Neo and now the mobile apps is ease of use. I've mentioned this when I've talked about Luminar Neo before. It seems that Skylum is a newer company, so they weren't constrained by any kind of existing framework. They built this platform fresh, so it's cohesive and it's easy to use. I am all about not spending a ton of time in the editing process, so I make use of all of the shortcuts that I can. Luminar Neo on the computer and now Luminar Mobile have some of my favorite shortcuts. So let's dive in. Starting on my phone, because that is what is brand new today, there are a number of ways that you can get photos on your phone, AirDrop, your camera's app, using a drive. There are little kits where you can plug your camera into your phone or your iPad um, or an SD card into your device. I have transferred over a few images to my phone to look at today. These are raw images from a few different cameras, but I can edit JPEG or even the HEIC images that I captured with my phone. Okay, let's edit some images. First, you have undo and redo at the top along with the settings and the share button. And then across the bottom, you have cropping and straightening along with the erase tool. These are generally the two that I start with when I'm editing. I like the aspect ratio in the crop function because it has social media specific options. So if you have an idea of what your phone's gonna be used for, you can edit using these specific aspect ratios. Okay, let's jump to this image to look at the erase tool. If you zoom in, you can see that a bird was flying through the frame and I don't want that bird in the image. So you can change the size of the paintbrush and then scribble over the item that you want to remove and it magically disappears. Okay, back to this photo. The next three modes are where you really dig into the editing. The two that are towards the left are for filters. I love these little film icons. Um, we will get to those when I use my iPad. And then here is sky replacement. Check out how I can use it here on a photo that I captured with my phone. I have used this a few different times and in a few different ways. And man, it is super smart, whether you're using Luminar Neo or Luminar Mobile on your mobile devices. And moving into the middle, which is all of your discrete adjustments, as well as some special shortcuts. First is Enhance AI. The AI features in Luminar look across your photo and make specific changes that make sense with the characteristics of the original photo. For example, using Enhance AI here, my entire photo just comes to life. You're seeing brightness and details coming out in the background, but amazingly, not details coming out in my skin. My skin is still looking natural. It's, it's an absolutely amazing tool. In fact, I'm not sure I wanna even do anything else with this photo, but let's at least continue looking at the options. Next, we're dealing with exposure. And then next to that, you have contrast and color temperature and saturation and vibrance is here. What I found surprising here is that Skylum has made the tools self-explanatory. And that being said, I'm always impressed with the online manuals that Skylum produces. If you don't know how to do something, their manuals offer simple instructions. If we need to add or remove a vignette, that is right here. And then I can just double tap on the adjuster square to return to the baseline because I don't want to change anything with the vignette in this photo. Then the next few have the AI designation, like Enhance AI did, which means that the app is looking across the photo intelligently to adjust the image. Looking at Structure AI, I can enhance or diminish details, but I'm not really changing my face. And then there's this Relight AI, 
This tool is pretty wild and I've used it for landscapes in the past quite a number of times. It changes the lighting in the foreground and the background separately. Plus you can change the depth of the foreground and background options. It's wild. In this photo, I can bring the brightness in the foreground and in the background up or down and even change the depth, meaning that delineation between the foreground and the background. Like I said, I've used this tool on a number of different landscape images for different purposes. In fact, I actually do feature it in a video I made about Luminar Neo on my computer, and I will link to that video in the description because this tool is definitely worth more of a look. Okay, next we have skin and body AI. These are great for portraits. You can smooth out skin, you can remove shine. I don't like changing too much about the body, but you can make someone appear thinner here. Moving over, there is the landscape tool. So I actually want to switch photos. Here is uh, me in Sedona a few years ago. In the landscape tool, you can use the golden hour slider to warm up the image. In this case, it was just after uh, sunrise on a cloudy day. So a little bit of warmth is nice. And then you can enhance foliage or this last slider controls fog or dehazing the image. Um, in this case, I think I'm going to dehaze a little bit to bring some of those details out in the rocks in the background. <sighs> okay. I'm actually thinking let's take a look at Relight AI again. I can adjust each of these sliders until I brighten myself in the foreground, but I can leave the rest of the image alone or even, you know, decrease the brightness in the background a little bit if I want. Okay, jumping back into the tour, those of you that love a curve, you've got the full curve tool here. And here is the details tool where you are fine tuning the details with small, medium, and large options. And then last year's the monochrome tool, tool, which has different controls for the different color channels. This app has a lot of options. I wouldn't say that my phone is my first choice for editing on because I do prefer a bit of a larger screen, but having the option of doing a detailed edit while I'm out in the field is invaluable. I will absolutely be using this app for both photos captured with my phone and photos captured with my cameras. But now let's take a look at Luminar Mobile for iPad. This app is very similar to the iPhone version, which we've just gone through. So I wanna focus on the filters. Uh, I mentioned earlier in this video that I like shortcuts in my editing. I like using filters as a way to quickly jump to a certain look. Sometimes um, I will leave it there and sometimes I'll just use it at a starting point. Okay, this is a photo of me at Bryce Canyon. And you can see that there is a mode dial in the lower left and I am choosing filters. And we see that this first group is ideal for portraits. I actually really like Maria. Um, let's choose her and then the dial at the top controls how strong the filter is. And then if I want, I can go into adjustments and change any little thing I want to beyond that. Okay, let's bring in a different photo. This one is from a couple of weeks ago when I was in downtown Flagstaff, Arizona at night. Let's go to filters again, but I wanna to jump to the creative filters. And I actually like all of them, but wooden is my favorite for this photo. So let's crank up the strength. And that was quick. I actually really like this version of the photo, but I think let's start again and edit it in a different way. Let's look at the monochrome options again. Yeah, there we go. And let's look at the details in the image. I can increase the medium details a little bit, and then I'm happy with it. I realized that I just flew through the iPad version, but it is nearly the same as the iPhone version of the app. I've been using it for a while. In fact, I created this photo in it. I did a little bit of work on the Raven itself, but the main thing is that I replaced the sky. This image had a completely plain gray sky before, and then I made it just have some interest in the background. I already know a few questions that you will want answered, so let's do that now. What exact devices am I editing on today, and do you need to have the latest models to be able to use Luminar Mobile? I do not have the newest iPhone or iPad. These are both several years old, but they are the pro versions. 
um, then they're updated to the most recent version of iOS. These have held up extremely well, even though they've had more than a few falls. Funny story real quick, the other day Raymond and I were on a trail in Sedona for sunrise. You'll see more of those photos in a video later this week, but I had my camera bag lying on the side of the trail and I set my phone screen down on it and stood up. My phone slid off the bag onto the side of the trail and then continued to slowly slide screen down to the middle of the trail, scraping over the soft red Sedona dirt, but also rocks along the way. And Raymond and I just stood there watching it happen. <laughs> I felt helpless, but it still works. Anyway, for the technicals, my iPad is the iPad Pro 12.9 inch fourth generation and I have a terabyte of storage in here. This iPad is the generation prior to the introduction of the M1 and now M4 chips that are in the iPad Pro models. And then this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which contains the A14 chip, and I have 512 gigabytes of storage. To give you an idea, the newest iPhone 15 Pro models have an A17 Pro chip, and you can get up to a terabyte of storage. All that is to say that Apple's mobile devices are even faster now. So <laughs> if you're interested in taking your entire photography workflow to mobile, you absolutely can. You can find out specifics on if your iPad or iPhone will run this app on Skylum's site. I will link to it in the description of this video. For the purposes of this video, I edited here at my desk, but the entire point for me is that I can edit anywhere on my mobile devices. I mean, I do have a laptop that I can bring around, but my iPad and my iPhone are just so much easier to bring with me and I can edit lying down if I want to. <laughs> Plus I actually really like using my Apple Pencil or a stylus when I edit. I have traveled with my iPad or my iPhone only rather than bringing a computer on trips. And I'm able to do more and more with just my iPad as different platforms have progressed in their app development. Take YouTube and YouTube Studio, for example. I can now do a large portion of my work using those. In fact, my iPad is a generation or so too old for this, but on the newer iPad Pros with the M chips, you can even edit videos in Final Cut Pro. I want one of the new 11 inch iPads so bad. Let me know if you have one and what you think. And definitely let me know what you think of Luminar Mobile. I know a lot of you out there are interested in a mobile workflow, so I'm curious if you are already using Luminar on your iPad and if you're excited to try it out on your iPhone. Like I said, I really like it and I will definitely continue using it. I am hoping to get out for a couple of road trips this summer, so I think it will come in especially handy for those. And for those of you who are interested in this, I will have a link in the description of this video for you to learn more. Thank you, of course, to Skylum for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching.